Hello, hello. So I have been working on this timeline again, and this is just one short thing that I'm going to point out. This is the timeline that I was working on that I uh, am just tweaking information on and coming to solid conclusions with the information in the years and all of that before I transfer over to another timeline to see if it fits in different years. We have Herod dying in Nisan of 4 BC according to the historical record. And in Matthew, there is a very important prophecy which tells you that you're going to start Jesus' time in Israel after Herod's death, not before. In Matthew 2, you're told that Herod ordered all children under two years of age killed, which means that Jesus would have not been a newborn baby or infers that Jesus would not have been a newborn baby at that time. But what you see at the end of the chapter is when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, because that was where Joseph took Mary and Jesus to hide out from Herod so that Jesus wasn't killed as a baby. So as a, uh, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. He arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Here we go, Matthew 2, 23. He came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Nazarene, the Hebrew word is Nazareth, which means the branch. This is where we get multiple pro prophecies, which tell us that, uh, well, let's look at, I can't make the window bigger. Sorry, Isaiah 11. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, Nazareth, Nazarene, shall grow out of his roots. We also learn this in Zechariah 6, 12 and 13. Speak unto him, saying, Thus be the Lord of hosts, saying, a man who's, uh, Behold, a man whose name is the branch, he shall grow up out of his place. Talking about he's going to come from Israel for the purpose of eventually redeeming Israel. So how does that relate to this timeline? The count relating to the life of Christ in the 6,034 years of world history is not going to start until Christ comes back to Israel. So 6,000 years, you think 4,000 pre-Christ, 34 for the life of Christ, 2,000 since the ascension of Christ. How does that work out? Well, Jesus is going to be older than 34 years of age. Based on his birth, how old he would have been before Herod, coming back to Israel after Herod. But it's from the time that he comes back to Israel after Herod's death, up through the end when he ascends, that you're looking for that interme intermediate period of time between 4,000 and 2,000. So what I'm looking at on this timeline specifically, again, this is the one I'm working with, to isolate these things before I start moving data over to other years and looking at plausibility, is you've got 6,034 years of world history. You have, according to this, it would actually be 3,996 and a half, but we'll say 3,997 years from creation to Christ. 37 years of Christ's life from birth to ascension not starting to be counted until they're back after Herod dies, back in the land, because Jesus seems to come up out of the land, the Nazareth, the branch, the Nazarene. And Matthew 2.23 tells you about that prophecy, beginning or being fulfilled after Herod dies and they come back from Egypt. And then from ascension to kingdom, 2,000 years. So this is what I'm working on. Uh, I will continue to work on it, and I will write all this out eventually, but I just wanted to show you guys what I found. If you have any questions, let me know. See you later.